In this video, we are going to study heteroscedasticity with Bruch Pagan and White Test in Python using Jupyter Notebooks. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice included within it. Ok, so let's go into the web browser where the Jupyter Notebook is located. So the first step within the video regarding this Jupyter Notebook is that we need to add a new cell below. To add this new cell, we click on the Insert Cell Below button. And the first step regarding the code is we need to import the corresponding packages. Therefore, we're going to comment this as step 1, which is Packages. And we're going to import statsmodels.api as sm. We're importing that feature from stats models for data downloading. Then we're going to import stats models dot formula dot API as SMF and we're importing that feature from stats models for multiple linear regression calculation. Then we're going to import stats models dot tools dot tools as SMT and we're importing that feature from stats models to add a constant or intercept column to independent or explanatory variables object. And last, we're going to import stats models dot stats dot diagnostic as SMD, and we're importing that feature from stats models for Bruch pattern and Y tests. To run these code lines or this cell, we go ahead and either click run or press shift enter on the keyboard. Then we continue with step number two, which is the data. For data, we're going to create an object which is named house prices underscore object, which is equal to sm feature from stats models dot datasets dot get underscore r dataset. And we open parentheses. The first parameter, which is data name, equals to and within quotations house prices, comma, package equals to and within quotations AER comma cash equals to true. So what we're doing here is we're downloading house prices object from our package AER and with cash equals to true means that once we download the data it saves it locally so we don't need to go and download it again every time we run the code. Notice that this will download data and documentation within house prices object. Therefore we create a new object named house prices with only the data therefore equals to house prices underscore object and we get its dot data attribute. So let's go ahead and visualize part of this data frame and we do so with print house prices dot ILOC which is integer location and then within brackets semicolons meaning all the rows comma from columns 0 to 3 with Python notation is going to be the first three columns and we get its head method. So again, to run this code lines or this cell, we press shift enter on the keyboard. And there we can see the data, first five rows and the first three columns. We're focusing only on the first three columns of price, lot size and bedrooms in this video. The reason for this is that our original multiple regression would have price as a dependent or explained variable being explained by the independent or explanatory variables of lot size and bedrooms. If you want to read the full documentation of this data, you can do so with the following code line, which is print and from house prices underscore object, we get its dot two underscores doc, two underscores attribute, and as it is a single code line, we press shift enter on the keyboard, and we can see the documentation from the data. So then we continue with step number three, which is the model. For this, we create an object named MLR, which stands for multiple linear regression, equals to SM feature, from stats models dot OLS, which stands for ordinary least squares function, and within parentheses we have the following parameters: formula equals to, and within quotations, because this is a string, we have price, which is the dependent or explained variable, with the special character means explained by the independent or explanatory variables of lot size plus bedrooms, comma, data equals to the house prices object we created above, and we fit this regression, open and close parentheses. And here we press shift enter on the keyboard to fit the corresponding model. So then we're going to continue with step number four, which is heteroscedasticity. And for this, before going and coding 
brush pattern and white test, what we're going to do is we're going to create two objects. The first of this is IVAR with the independent or explanatory variables, therefore equals to house prices dot ILOC, integrate location, and we open brackets, semicolons, because we're selecting all the rows from columns, and in this case, one, two, three. The reason for this is that we're only selecting the columns where we have lot size and bedrooms. And then we're going to create a new object named IVARC because we want to add a constant or intercept column, which is a column of ones. Therefore, e equals two, and we have SMT feature from stats models dot add underscore constant function, and we have the following parameters: data equals to IVAR, comma p prepend equals to true, so that that it's added at the beginning of the object. And just to double check it's created correctly, we're going to print it. So we're printing part of this data frame with print function and again with IBARC, but in this case directly with head method. So let's go ahead and run this cell by pressing Shift Enter on the keyboard. And we can see the object IBARC, which has the first four, five rows here and the columns, which are the constant as mentioned previously, which is just once and then the two independent or explanatory variables of lot size and bedrooms. So now we're going to continue with the first of our heteroscedasticity tests, the bruch pattern test, and before going and coding it, we're going to comment its equation. Therefore, here, instead of having code, we're going to change into a cell of markdown. And as mentioned previously, we're going to begin with bruch pattern test. So we're going to comment this here, which is bruch pagan test and the equation we're going to use latex notation therefore we begin with two dollar signs and we have the following which is hat and we have residuals to the power of two equals two hat gamma zero plus hat gamma 1, which is multiplied by lot size, plus hat gamma 2, which is multiplied by bedrooms. And then we have again the $2 signs. So let's go ahead and run this cell by pressing shift enter on the keyboard. So what we have with Bruch pattern test is that First, we do the original multiple linear regression, MLR, and from that we get its estimated residuals. These estimated residuals are the differences between dependent variable price actual values and price fitted values estimated through the linear regression. And with that, we do the second regression, the one for Bruch pattern test, and as we can see here, we have several hats because they are estimates, therefore we have the estimated square residuals, which are equal to the estimated gamma zero coefficient, which is the estimated constant or intercept from this regression, plus the estimated gamma 1 coefficient multiplied by lot size, plus the estimated gamma 2 coefficient multiplied by bedrooms. So let's go ahead and code this Bruch pattern test. Now again, this cell is code, so we'll do so by creating an object named BP test equals to, and we'll be using SMD feature from stats models dot HET, heteroscedasticity underscore Bruch pagan function, and we open parentheses. And the parameters for this function are RESID with the corresponding residuals, which are found at MLR object dot RESID, comma, EXOG underscore HET equals to, and here we have the independent or explanatory variables for the variance, no dependent variable needed. Therefore, we're going to include here IBARC object, the one we created above, the one that includes the constant or intercept column. And we're going to print its results. So we use print, and first we're going to print the Lagrange multiplier. Therefore, BP test at position zero with Python notation, that's the first position. And also we're going to print Lagrange multiplier p value, and that is found at BP test one with Python notation, that's the second position. So let's go ahead and run this cell by pressing shift enter on the keyboard or this code lines and we can see the results first the Lagrange multiplier and then the Lagrange multiplier p-value. 
This Lagrange multiplier p-value is a chi-squared test p-value with a joint null hypothesis that independent variables coefficients are equal to zero. If rejected, linear regression errors are assumed heteroscedastic or with non-constant variance. If not rejected, linear regression errors are assumed homoscedastic or with constant variance. And now we're going to continue with the second test, which is white test. So again, the cell here, we're going to modify it into markdown. And it's going to be similar to the Bruch pattern test. So we'll go ahead and copy this. So we copy this. And copy and paste it at the new cell, which is also marked down. So we return to the Bruch pattern and press Shift Enter on the keyboard. And going into Bruch pattern test, instead, it's going to be white test. So we just modify that part with white test. And we're going to include cross terms in this white test. So what we do is we just modify the equation. So what we modify here is at gamma 2, instead of bedrooms, it's going to be log size to the power of 2 plus, and then we have hat gamma. In this case, we continue with gamma 3, which is multiplied by, and in this case, we're going to include it within parentheses, which is the cross term. Therefore, it's going to be lot size times bedrooms. And then we continue with, again, hat gamma, in this case, gamma 4, and this case is going to be multiplied by bedrooms, plus, again, hat, gamma, this is the last one, therefore, gamma 5, multiplied by bedrooms to the power of 2. So, we press Shift Enter on the keyboard, and we can see that we have the equation for white test with cross terms, and the difference between this one and bruch pattern test is that first we added the square lot size, we also added the cross term, which is the product between lot size multiplied by bedrooms. And last, we added bedrooms to the power of 2. So those are the new independent or explanatory variables added to this equation. So now let's continue by coding white test with cross terms. We're back into code. So we're going to create an object named W test for white test equals to SMD feature from stats models dot HET heteroscedasticity underscore white. So we're performing white test with cross terms and the parameters are the following. RESID again for the residuals found within MLR.RESID, comma, and in this case it's only EXOG equals to IBARC, that independent or explanatory variables together with the constant or intercept, which are the independent or explanatory variables for the variance. Again, no dependent variable needed. And we're going to print the results using print function. And again, first we print the Lagrange multiplier, which is found at W test position zero with Python notation. Therefore, that's the first position. And then we're going to print Lagrange multiplier p value. And that is found at W test position one with Python notation. Therefore, the second position. So let's go ahead and run this code lines for this cell with shift enter on the keyboard and we can see the results for the, the Lagrange multiplier and then the Lagrange multiplier p-value. This Lagrange multiplier p-value is a chi-square test p-value with a joint null hypothesis that independent variables coefficients are equal to zero. If rejected, linear regression errors are assumed heteroscedastic or with non-constant variance. If not rejected, linear regression errors are assumed homoscedastic or with constant variance. Okay, so with this, we finish with the code. So we go ahead and save it. And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.